It's good to have you around again on Crunch Econometrics. This is the third out of nine video tutorials on our GMM series. Please, I will encourage you to watch the first video and the second video on understanding GMM and the one-step difference GMM. This is because by watching these videos, you will have a lot to gain about the GMM estimation procedure. Whether you are writing a manuscript or you are working on your dissertation, on the screen is a 10-point guide to help you. Make sure that you have a panel data. It may be balanced or an unbalanced panel. Ensure that the number of cross-sections is greater than the number of time dimension in your panel and endeavor that you generate year dummies. Specify a dynamic model. Set up Stata to run panel data estimations. Make sure you have your do file and your log file ready. Perform preliminaries as the case may be. Go ahead to estimate the model and check diagnostics as you go along and finally interpret your results. In this example, I have a balanced panel. I have 54 countries across 11 years and I have specified a dynamic model. You can see it right here on the screen. I have set up Stata and I have my do file ready with all the codes written. In my usual practice, I have my log file open to track all estimations. It is assumed that I have done all the preliminaries. All I'm going to do in this tutorial is to show you how to estimate the model and run several simulations and check diagnostics as we progress. I will not be interpreting results because I have a different video specifically for interpreting GMM output. Please let me pause by saying that you will not have access to my data. So please use your own data set but the do file is available on my website. All the Stata tutorials I've undertaken, I have their do files on my website. It is free of charge, you can download it. But make sure you have a Google account and a Chrome browser for easy access and easy download. In this practical example, I'll be looking at the impact of technology liberalization on economic growth and I have specified the model using the extra bond to syntax in Stata. You can see here, I have some options here coded in green. And what do these options signify. By specifying the no-level equation, I'm informing Stata that I want to perform a difference GMM estimation. With the no diphthagon option, I'm informing Stata not to report the difference in Sagan or Hansen statistics. The two-step robust option will give finite sample corrected two-step covariance matrix. The robust option will provide heteroscedastic and autocorrelation consistent variance covariance matrix. The orthogonal option is requesting Stata to use the forward orthogonal deviation transformation instead of forced differencing. And by indicating the small option, I prefer to have T statistics and F statistics and not Z or world test. Going back here to the command I've specified, I have here instruments, which is the lag of the dependent variable, is the internal instrument. These are the GMM instruments. While my regressors and the control variables and the year dummy are my external instruments. They are in the IV style bracket. Before we go into the practical example, let me explain how regressors are classified in GMM. We have predetermined regressors that are assumed to be correlated with past errors but not with current and future errors. Endogenous regressors are assumed to be correlated with past and possibly present errors. While strictly exogenous regressors do not have any correlation with errors across all time periods. On the screen, I have two questions which I've also provided some answers. The first is that why use Extabon 2 instead of Extabond? Remember that we have two estimators. There's an original estimator called the difference GMM and the augmented estimator known as the system GMM. Extabon 2 can implement both estimators. It also makes available the finite sample correction to the Wenmeyer two-step covariance matrix. Using Extabon 2 makes two-step robust more efficient than one-step robust. It also addresses instruments and proliferation problem, especially with the collapse option. The second question is why do we estimate two-step difference GMM? The Arellano bond estimators have two variants, which is one and two-step. And the two-step difference GMM is efficient and robust to heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. That is quoting Rudman 2009. What will be the learning outcome in this tutorial? I intend showing you the impact of these options on your results. I've explained what these options mean. So we are going to run several simulations to see how they affect your results. 
These are the variables and their classifications, as you can see. In my instrument set, you can see the internal instrument, which is a lag of the dependent variable. And in the external instrument set, I have the three explanatory variables here, followed by two of my control variables and the year dummies. In red, I have a control variable, which I'm going to include much later on to show you the impact on the results. And I have another variable which I did not use at all in the model because GMM allows you to use any variable even though it is not in your model but it's part of your data set. So I'm going to show you how a different variable can influence your results. So this is why I'm including the log of trade. So if you are ready, please load your data and let's get started. Okay, we are now in Stata domain. You can see my log file is on. In my data editor, I have 54 countries. The first country is Algeria, and the 54th country is Zimbabwe. Each country has 10 years observations from 2000 to 2015. I have generated 11 year dummies. So these are the year dummies representing each year. So make sure you generate year dummies before you run your GMM regressions. Here is my do file with all the codes which I'll be executing today. In this tutorial, I'm going to run nine different simulations to show you how the options will impact on your results. Once again, this do file will be available on my website, even though my data will not be available for public use, but you have access to the do file. I have already run all these estimations, so this tutorial will be taken from my log file. So this is the essence of having a log file. It's able to track what you've done, and I can easily repeat these regressions and modify them anytime I want to. So the first thing we do is to set up Stata to run panel data estimations. I have the command already written out here in my do file. I highlight it and I run. So this is the Stata output on that. I have a strongly balanced panel. So now we are ready to run all our GMM estimations. Like I said, I've already executed all the commands. So I'm going to explain my results from the log file. The first thing we are going to do is to see how the result will turn out without the collapse option. I have highlighted the command and you can see here, I did not put any collapse option here where we have the GMM instrument. So without the collapse option, how would the result look like? So this is the output. At the top of the table, you can see two step difference GMM. And one thing you will see is that the number of instruments is greater than the number of groups, which is not good. Let's scroll down. Hansen is 0.367. Though this looks okay, but the problem is that instruments are larger than the number of groups, which is not a good sign. So this is not a good result. Even though the lag of my dependent variable is very significant at 1%, and, my, and one of my explanatory variable is also significant here at 1%. But given the fact that the number of instruments exceed the number of groups, we can use this result. So we have to correct that by using the collapse option. We are now going to use the collapse option. And this is the command. And here you can see the collapse option here. So let's check out the result and see if there's any significant difference. Here we can now see that the number of instruments, the number is now collapsed to 23, which is lower than the number of groups so this is much better. Let's check out Hansen. Hansen 2 is a lot better at 0.114. I forgot to talk about the AR2 in my first results. AR2 is more important than AR1. AR1 can be significant, but AR2 should not be significant. This is because if AR2 is significant, it indicates that some lags of the dependent variable, which might be used as instruments, are in fact endogenous. So they are bad instruments. So always look out for AR2. AR2 should not be significant. Let's look at some coefficients. The lag of the dependent variable is still significant. And um, my explanatory variable has reduced in significance to 5% from 1%. So even at that, I prefer this result with the collapse option than the other one without the collapse options. Please always use collapse option 
when you're estimating GMM. The third simulation will be to see how the results will look like without the no div Sargon option but with the collapse option. So this is the code we are running. You can see it here highlighted without the no div Sargon but with collapse option. So what do we have? Because we have the collapse option, instrument set is lower than number of groups. This is not surprising. Hansen statistics and AR2 are exactly what we had previously. So this is the same results we had with just the collapse option. So that that means with the exclusion of no div Sargon, but with the collapse option, Stata will not report the difference enhancing statistics because you have indicated collapse. So please make sure you note that. I wrote here that difference enhancing statistics not shown due to inclusion of collapse option. So let's look at simulation number four without no div Sargon and collapse options. Let me highlight the code here so you can see. Since we are not indicating the collapse option, it is not surprising that instrument set is higher than number of groups. And if you scroll down, you will observe that Hansen is exactly what we had before when we did not indicate the collapse option. And by not indicating the no div Sargon option, you are telling Stata you want it to report the difference in Hansen. So this is the difference in Hansen statistic. So if you want to have your difference in Hansen statistics, now you know exactly what to do. You will remove it from the options list here and Stata will report the no div Sargon option for you, provided you are not using the collapse option. So I have a brief summary here that without the collapse option, instrument set is 59, which is greater than the number of groups, and enhancing is 0 0.367. And the difference in enhancing statistics is shown. Let's look at simulation 5 without robust option. This is the command, it's highlighted. So I have removed robust from here. Without the robust option, if you compare what we had before with robust, you will observe that the standard errors have reduced considerably, thereby inflating the T statistics. So if you remove your robust option, standard errors will reduce and T statistics will be inflated. The coefficient value are exactly what they are. You can always compare. And if you see here, enhancing is what we had before. So the significant difference is that by excluding robots from your options list, you are going to have inflated T statistics. Let's look at simulation six without small option. This is the code. I have removed small. And looking at the results, the significant difference here is that Stata is now reporting the Z statistics and the world statistics instead of the T statistics and F statistics. So this is a matter of choice. If you prefer to have the world statistics reported, then remove the small from your option set. Every other thing is still the way they are. You can see Hansen here is 0 0.114 and AR2 is still at 0 0.523. But I always prefer to have T statistics and F statistics because for me, they are easier to interpret. So I always use the small option. So like I said, it's a matter of choice. So let's look at simulation seven without orthogonal option. This is the code and I've removed orthogonal option. After executing that command, I observed that the lag of the dependent variable has reduced in significance from one to 5% and none of my regressor is significant. No coefficient here is significant. And also by removing the orthogonal option, Stata is now using instruments for force differences equation rather than instruments for orthogonal deviations equation. These two are not the same. If you don't specify the orthogonal option, you are going to incur data loss or loss of observations, particularly if you have an unbalanced panel. Check out the number of observations without the orthogonal option is now 372 as against 375 when we use the orthogonal option. So using the orthogonal option in quotes will save your data or observations to some extent. It will reduce the number of holes in your data. Another thing I observed with the orthogonal option is that Hansen is now inflated to 0.382, which in my opinion is not good enough. So I'd rather stick to when Hansen was 0.114. So this tells me that I must always include orthogonal option in my syntax. Let's look at simulation 8 if we include another instrument. This is the syntax. 
and all this while have not been using inflation as an instrument it's just part of a control variable now i have included inflation as an instrument how will the result look like here we can see that the number of instruments have increased by one from 23 to 24 and um, the lag of dependent variable is now significant very significant at one percent level i now have two control variables one is significant at 10 inflation itself is now significant at one i have an explanatory variable here very significant at one percent so this tells me that inflation as an instrument has a lot of impact on my coefficients let's look at hansen hansen is 0 0.214 which is still okay in my opinion and AR2 is 0 0.511 so if I'm to choose I may decide to take this model whereby I have inflation as an additional instrument because these results are a lot better it will look good if I'm presenting a manuscript to a journal and I have some good results to show so I think I will go for this model with the inclusion of inflation as an additional instrument so the last simulation will be to show you how you can include a variable that you have not used in your model as an additional instruments gmm allows you to do that now i'm going to use the log of trade the log of trade is not part of my model at all but is in my data set so i'm going to include the log of trade as part of my external instruments you can see it's a log of trade so let's see the impacts on the results the number of instruments is increased to 24 clearly i can see that by using trade as an instrument it's not good on my outcome none of my regressors here are significant let's look at hansen hansen is okay at 0 0.144 but because i can see that my regressors are not even significant this is not good in my opinion so i may end up removing the log of trade and use inflation instead as an external instrument so these are the nine simulations we're able to do just to show you how your results can change as we change any of these options so this is where i'm going to wrap up the tutorial for today please keep a date with me on my next video where we look at one step system gma for references please look up these papers and so many others on the internet i want to say thank you for watching for those who have supported me by sharing my links and my videos i say thank you very much and if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please do so crunch econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users please don't go away i'll be right back